Hello and welcome to this Saturday Hukalo webinar. Uh, this is Karen Newman and today we will have Jim Charles. It is Saturday the 1st of July and I'd just like to welcome you Jim and to say who everyone is in the room and I have to look and, and see who everybody is but we have Sheer, uh, Salesh, Leela, we have Dawn, we have Max, we have Christine, April and Amanda. So welcome everybody and welcome to all the people viewing on the live webinar link as well as on YouTube. So good good afternoon, Jim. Hi, how are you? Or good morning on your side. Yeah, so it's morning here and afternoon there. So yeah, exactly. We're on all kinds of times and it's early, even earlier morning where Max is. So Oh, well, I'm glad he so, got up early. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And it's good to be here. It's nice to see you. Introduce Hello. people in your room. Oh, there's people in my room. There's, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Say your names. Angie. <laughs> Barbara. Erica. Erica. Lydia. Lydia. And Raymond. Raymond. Because it's, it's a little darker in here than usual. But um, that's okay. Also, uh, what uh, do you have some announcements to make, and then I'll make a couple. Yes, uh, Max, did you want to make your announcements, or do you all want right, to go? I'll go first. So, okay. So we just uh, want to remind people we are doing the workshop in the Rochester, Buffalo, upstate New York area. It is August third to August eighth, five days, and this Jim and I will be teaching Reiki, galactic Reiki, channeling, telepathy, psychic work, and we'll do. Uh, meditations, healings, uh, lots of practice work, and um, uh, Star Watch meditation under the stars and galactic languages. So it it would be pretty intense and and relaxed in the same way, intense relaxation. And uh, it's in the in the in the camp with uh, wooden cabin, wood cabins, and uh, great nature and wonderful uh, food. The, the chef is there. Um, it's pretty good chef, professional chef cooking for that. And it's very affordable, uh, much cheaper than, than usual. Uh, to get to register, go to hucola.org and click on the workshop. And the registrations, we already have um, 28 people certainly oh, wow. registered, three coming from Europe, uh, some flying, some driving. And uh, seven seven spots left. So hurry up! We end the registration in three weeks, Ju July twentieth. Um, that's about it. So uh, we want the right people there. So if you feel called, uh, the spirits will guide you. Perfect. Well, I encourage everyone if they have a chance to go over there, and then when they finish uh, with you guys on the eighth, then they can come to Holland on the 12th of August because on uh, the 12th of August it will be myself, Sean Swanson and Vita Kukulhoff. We will be having the intergalactic uh, Amsterdam channeling experience on that Saturday and it will be in Amsterdam and you can find out, it will be up on the Hukula website but you can also go to my website about oneness.com and register if you want. So it will be three channelers uh, on the same day in Amsterdam. Is it uh, local or online? It'll be it'll be uh, local. It'll be live, in person. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, we, Maybe well, we can arrange to do something online, um, but uh, that one will be uh, definitely uh, in person. So for an in-person audience. So, if anyone wants to come to Amsterdam, let us know. All right, I'm done. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, maybe we should just ask in the room, uh, did you have someone, Jim, that you wanted, that was going to be coming through? Have you already had that discussion, or? No, we didn't, uh, we didn't discuss that yet. Um, we were talking about Elijah maybe coming, but we're not sure if he's coming or not. So, uh, anybody here want to request anyone? I'd like to request somebody, but I know he won't come. Well, just request them. Request them anyway. <laughs> yeah. Spirit Coast, okay. Tesla. Tesla, okay. Does anyone in the room have any requests? You can just Anybody out there? Sheer? Yeah, actually, I want to invite someone from the Galactic Federation of Light. Seems that they have a lot of rules that we should know about. 
Okay. Okay. All right, we should just go down the line. Selesh, did you have anyone? Okay, Leela? Uh, uh, no one at the moment, thank you. Okay. Um, what, is, what is about Ra? What is what about Ra? Well, he can also maybe be invited. Okay, you want to invite Ra? Okay, perfect. Option. That's uh, the option. Max, perfect. Max, did you have someone? Oh, I, I, no, I, I'm good. Okay, Don, did you have anyone? Not at this time. Okay, um, I'm reading in the chat. Um, Angie is saying ish. Christine, did you have anyone? No, I can't think of anyone. Thank okay. you. Um, April? Grindel. Grindel, yay, jazz hands. And then uh, Amanda saying. Uh, Grindel. <laughs> uh, Archangel Gabriel is coming to oh. Amanda. So, okay. and yes, I got a second a vote for Grendel. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm. I, there's a couple things I'd like to say before we start. Sure. Uh, first of all, about the workshop, it is going to be really wonderful. Um, I think that. Uh, it is a really good opportunity. There's also going to be some um, chakra work, uh, a workshop on the chakras, teaching on, on all the different things about that. There's going to be a lot of energy there, and a lot of people uh, with healing energies are coming, and I believe that there will be a lot of good healing there as well. So, Plus, it's out in nature. When Angie and I went, uh, the energy there was really nice, very positive very fresh so I know that some of you may have trouble with a church camp sort of setting because it's sort of rustic and there's bunk beds and things of that nature but I think that all in all that um, it's going to be a beautiful experience there and that you're going to enjoy it another thing is is I noticed that there is a lot of negativity out there out there coming our way in in one form or another please don't let it bother you that much it's just the what is going to be happening it's going to be um it's a it's just part of life and uh we can't let that bring us down or we can't be too bothered by it you just sort of have to ignore it at some point and if it gets too bad we can send them away if we can but um the thing is about uh, these people that are saying all kinds of negativity and negative things is that they want to affect you. They want to stop your forward progress and they want to make it seem like what they're saying is vital. And I I've seen so many things out there that are, that are uh, ascension stoppers. People saying that, oh, these modalities to use are bad you can't do that you can't do this you can't do that and your belief system and your positivity are what are, are important some modalities may not work for you but you find the ones that do and you use them and you stick with them and if somebody says it's not good then you know they're not right so I just wanted to tell you that I I've seen so much out there and just stay positive and be who you are and know that uh, these things will be coming and they'll it won't be uh, it won't be the last time you see a lot of negativity so just um, stay positive and be a great example and you'll be fine um, anything else anybody want to start with a blessing and I'd like to have someone start with a blessing is there anyone that wants to start with a blessing Oh, Angie will. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Angie. And and um, I'm seeing Jim's. Uh, I'm seeing Jim on the screen. Someone is saying that uh, they can't see him. I'm not sure, but I do I'm see here. you. Uh, we know you're there, but I I do see you. So. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Well, what I'll do is turn off and turn back on. Okay. Um, I mean, turn my uh, video off and turn it back on. Okay. 
Oh, Bashir sees you. He now he, he did see you. Uh, finally. Okay. How about no? Oh, you see your picture. There you are. Yay. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Angie, Hopefully take it away with the blessing. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Angie. Awa na tu a sanu ya na ni. Awa na ni ya sa tu tu a sa te geta na wa. Iya na na wa ta ti iya sa na ni ya a. Wa na ni ya wa a sa ni ya ya tu a. Ana ni ya ya tu a na ni iya ya ni. Wa na na a sa na ni ya 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 na tu a iya. Ia na ni a a wa na na i a da tu sa na ni a ya ya wa ta se te i a se te te wa a na na i wa sa te te i a to se wa na. Very good. Be with us today, shine your light, and encourage us in the ways that are good. You. God know us all in an individual way and you we want you to be with us in an individual way show us that we are going the right direction encourage us and move with us as we move forward in the light call us to be a part of that which is good and make us part of your will and guidance we love you and we know that you are with us, but sometimes we lose track of these things. So now, reinforce who you are with us and lift us up into a greater new understanding. Much love and many blessings to all. Thank you. Very good. Right. Excellent. So I will do a meditation unless there's something else someone has to say. I will do a meditation and bring someone in. Perfect. Anybody out there have anything? I think we're good on our side. So okay. what's that? I do a blessing. Oh, Barbara wants to do a blessing also. Okay, Barbara. Great. At the end. Oh, she said at the end. Okay. Oh, at the end. Perfect. Great. Well, we will do it at the end then. Very Thank good. you. Excellent. I will. Um, somebody else came in. Who was that? Carolyn. Carolyn came into our our room today, also. So we have welcome, several Carolyn. All right, hold on. Guess who? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Grendel. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, hold on one second. I'm not quite here yet. All right. Yeah. All right, I'm better. That's good. All right. <laughs> hello, everyone. I just came to say hello and to answer any questions you might have that are very general about things you're going through right now because there's a lot of energies a lot of things going on around the world around the solar system around the galaxy around the sun so uh i have at it if you will <laughs> yeah so um it's good to see you all and i um yeah yeah i'm here yeah so, <laughs> well, is there anyone that has any questions for grendel then yeah, I know there is some. 
Right, Sharon just asked if you could give just a general update. You mentioned a lot of things going on. If you would maybe talk about some of the things update. that are happening. Oh my God, I'll be here for a <laughs> um, How about some I of the things that are happening there. within the government? I think that's probably what he's referring yeah, to. Yeah, there's all kinds of governmental things, economic things. Um, there's so much confusion on the planet as far as who's leadership should be followed in some ways and what is good leadership and some people are turning a blind eye mm -hmm. to many things that are happening and other people are demonstrating and doing all that not just on the United States side but there are other places in the world where things are happening as well what oh all right so, yes, so many changes are happening in the, in, the, in the ideology of politics because it's never been like this before. It's always been so proper and so there's always been protocols that have been met. There's always been certain laws and uh rules that have been uh kept but now they're being broken and protocols are being broken and things are becoming a little more chaotic and it's not only from your government that this is happening but um from korean governments from russian governments from uh asian governments these things are not uh, clicking like they used to. They see that the times have changed and so they are starting to move more independently from the rest of the world where they were at one time really afraid to do so, but now they see opportunities where they can be more independent in many ways. and. This is causing a great deal of trouble uh, with communication. So that is an update that uh, I can give you right now. Any questions? Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? If you are correct, and everything's really. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, I have some feedback. There okay. is so a lot of things that are changing in the idea, the ideology of how things should be run at this time because, well, a catalyst was your the president, Trump, because he's disregarded a lot of uh, protocols. He's disregarded rules and regularly put, put his family in places where they shouldn't really be. And um, there's a lot of a lot of things going on. He still has a great amount of support because he is the president and he does have the power. And there are people afraid to go against him, um, and they're afraid of what he can do because it, he has already demonstrated that he is a very powerful person in many ways. He may not be correct all the time. But he is powerful, and he is not always. Um, uh, people may look at him as a little bit off balance, and um, there he's not alone. Kang Jae In from Korea, would you call that a balance? Nah, you. There are several others that are not quite balanced some from the African governments as well that are like uh, power hungry and uh, insane with power. Power can make you crazy. So remember that. Yes. Any other Thank questions? You. Does anyone else have a question? If you do, then uh, let me know and we can put it through. You need to understand that when someone has power and they are good at ruling, that is that they are well balanced in what they are thinking and doing. They have their mind on the people 
and not on themselves necessarily. But when you change that direction and put the power in your own mind and and the attention on yourself to be a great leader or to be remembered in history as a great person, then things sort of fall apart a little bit because you're not doing what you should be doing. You're doing what you think will make you look good. And that's not always the right thing. Yeah. I do. I have a question. Uh, I do have a question regarding all of this because yeah. we see some very bad behavior from um, yeah. different people across the world. Me. Yeah. And has there ever been such a time that it has been so chaotic like this? Yeah. Well, medieval times. Yeah. When you had bad acting popes and things of that nature, back in those days where the popes were were very corrupt and some people still think they are and when the church was just uh forcing people to do things the way they wanted them to do it and not really following god's love but what they thought but you see fear ruled at those times and and the 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 kings and queens were fearful of each other they were fearful of the church and so when there's a lot of fear, and there's a lot of fear growing now, there's a lot of bad decisions made. So you have to remember, there have been times in, well, a, a, a long time ago in history where fear ruled the earth in the sense that no one would move in any direction because they were afraid, or they would attack because they were afraid that if they didn't attack first, they would be attacked, or that they wanted to the power of some other place, and they figure if they surprise attack, then they might might uh, overcome some other place. But everyone was fearful of each other, and um, this is becoming another medieval kind of period where yeah. fear is starting to rue the day. Yeah, that, that, that's the question that, that it's so surprising. Don't you think that there was a moment, it seemed that we were really on a positive trajectory, yeah. and then it just, we really shifted indefinitely into this, um, well, into this yeah. medieval kind of mentality. And I'm, I, I wonder, is it possible to shift out of it, or do we, or is oh, this absolutely. sort of the last bastion of, of the negativity sort of rising up, trying to take hold? Is that why it's come on so strong? Well, let me, I don't want to dwell on the negativity. Sure, of course, of course. Because we can move beyond that. We can move forward. We can do a lot of things. But we have to take action. And that's what I'm doing where I am at. In Israel, I'm taking my own kind of action, and I'm moving forward in a positive way as much as possible. And that's what you all should do is move forward as mo as positively as you can in these times because they are going to have some effect on the everything around you and the people around you etc so you must be the positive example you must be the light in the darkness so to speak so but that's why i bring these things up is because the things are getting to a place where you need to stand up and say all right we have to stay positive. We have to move forward. We have to, and you're going to say, how are we going to do this? Because there are many different things against us, but you got to be yourself and you got to be the truth of the matter. If you don't stand for the truth, then you're just going to be washed away by the tide. So um, this is an important time to gather together and talk about the positive things and talk about how you can move forward and how, talk about how to keep the ascension moving in a great way because that's what we're here for. And that's a, a reason why I brought that up is because, heck, yeah, you guys are the answer to that problem. You guys, as many of you uh, can just join together in prayer thought positivity 
it will be helpful, believe me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, there's a question in the in the chat uh, by uh, by Angie about David Wilcox info. Uh, wanted yeah. to know: Is it legitimate info, and is it something that to, is to be trusted, or? or what well, I haven't seen it? anything recently, but if it's a, uh, there's many times that David is very good. Many times, and and Corey good also. Many times. But there are also just as many times where they're way out. <laughs> um, they, Why would that be then? Well, they see things, they hear things, they don't filter it through some of the the right filters. There, some of that negativity that comes out through them is just not filtered. And some of these stories about uh, that are just incredible are unbelievable and should not be believed. So, um, because there's no war going on under the earth, yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, uh, that's just, if that were happening, uh, there would be sinkholes all over the place. There would be people being discovered right and left doing uh, warlike things right under your feet. Um, but they say, oh, there's, way down deep no how how is it that the world is uh, there's no such huge hollow area that they could yeah. have a war in yeah. so it's it's some of those things are just ridiculous it's just a matter of showing some discernment and showing yeah some they just he just spews out everything that comes to his head so <laughs> yeah. well, well, it's a good thing to follow your gut and maybe if your gut says to you I don't know if that's really feasible or plausible then maybe yes. maybe you should trust that instinct that think about the feasibility that is one part of it and the and think about how negative that is that's yeah really a very negative thing so who planted that seed where you know so that people could be going wow there's a war going on we have to be careful and, oh, yeah. I'm going now. That's ridiculous. I've been under there. I've met, I met some of the people that live under the earth. There are many, and they're not warring. They're all separate colonies, and they're all separated by different things. So, they're they're at peace at this point. <laughs> mm, good. Well, that's good to know. Uh, Don had asked the question, and I don't know what he was referring to exactly, but he had asked, are the crystalline towers being activated? Well, I, I think he's talking about the stargates. As I see. Well. Okay. Because uh, they, they've been called many different things over the centuries. Uh, the stargates are starting to be worked on and activated because they will be needed for future use. And they will be needed after first contact. They will. There's many uses for them. They were used in the ancient world. They're in the sides of mountains. They're in many of the very popular uh, alien sites, such as Stonehenge and Machu Picchu, uh, Puma Punka, uh, Easter Island. Many of these places have the pyramids. They, they have their stargates there. And the, yes, they are starting to be tested and activated. Perfect. Thank you. Did you have another question, Don, or regarding that? Is that, or am I talking about the right things, or are you talking about something different? May it have a different name? Yeah. If you, if you want to, if you want to answer, go ahead. You can. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> Let me, I think he. I think he was muted. Let me unmute him. No, he's not muted. He can talk. Okay. Go ahead. No, I yes. have no other questions at this time. Um, I was told that the, the towers were in Telus, which was uh, one of the locations inside the Earth. Ah, yes. Okay, I understand what you're talking about. There, there are some uh, structures under the Earth that have been created, and they've been around for centuries literally centuries thousands of years and those are powerhouses they activate vortexes they activate different things as well uh, the crystal skulls 
I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the crystal skulls will be able to uh, be controllers of some of this uh, ancient technology. That popped told, into my head, sorry. Oh, I was told. Did that, that answer your question at all? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. You're welcome. I have a question. Yes. Um, Grindel, this is Christine. Yes. Blessed be. Um, I was wondering, um, for some of us who collect crystal skulls, yes. um, do our skulls um, have a small link to the main, to the major ones? Oh, there are many, many crystal skulls. It depends on who made it. Let me explain. Okay. When a relic is made, and when these crystal skulls are made, they are made by special uh, uh, people with energies that have that can put the energy into the stone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So there are many, many people out there uh, just making crystal little crystal skulls because they sell. They're they're good, but there are actually smaller relics of the skulls that are made by people that put energy into them and those are the ones that have great connection with the crystal skulls not just any old glass or crystal skull that you may find but it depends on who makes it and and you will be able to tell by the energy in the skull if it is a relic or if it's just a piece of art that someone made. But if I put um, healing energy into oh, it yeah. and focus and um, direct it to um, helping the earth and yes. connecting to all this, if, if my intention is put into it, Will that yeah. help or enable oh, well, the... Um, you can intention stones. You can intention yes. your crystal skulls. You can help. Uh -huh. You can put energy in them yourself. Yes. Yes. Um, that makes them strong, powerful healing uh, stones. I wouldn't call them a relic because they weren't made with the, the energy that the relics were made with. But you can empower your crystals. You can empower your stones. And many of you do that all the time. So, yes, you can yes. empower your stones and make them into healing crystals. They are helpful, yes. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question, too. Is it, is it, can you connect into that crystalline energy then? The one, the, yes. the main, the, like the Mac skulls, she could use her, she could program her skulls that she has or any kind of uh, crystal yes. that the, she could to, to that work are, together. The ones that are relics can be used to hook into that system, yes. And you can intention your stones to uh, perhaps connect with that system. It won't be the same kind of connection as an actual relic with the original energy in it but you will be able to get some of the energy and feel some of the connection there. It's okay. just like um, it would be a lesser kind of, just like copper is a great conductor, but there are lesser metals that do still do conducting. That's what it would be like. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, uh, there's a question here in the room. Okay. And then, okay, perfect. Go ahead. And yeah. then after that, she will go. All right. I bought a crystal head from the owner of Cernogy, one of the crystal skulls. Yes. He would sit next to the crystal skull for a few days. Was there any kind of um, absorption from that crystal skull into this crystal skull that I have? There could be. What Were they both relics and originals? or uh, were they? Cernogy was the original, one of the 13. Oh, one of the 13? 13 you had one has. of the 13? Yes. If that crystal skull is in and around other uh, crystals or crystal skulls or stones or it depends on the intention also that the people draw the energy from the crystal skulls and there's many uses for them but they are to uh, interact with all the other crystal technology that are is on the earth 
which is actually the uh, stargates and the crystal towers and the different things that are and the there are some crystal pyramids also uh, but yes energy can be gained by them they are an endless source of energy so if i work with them i connect with this energy maybe? you can connect with it yes uh, how well i don't know okay. depends on your belief system depends on your purpose Depends on many things, and I would have to be there to okay. look at that vibrational connection. Okay. But it does work, yes. Okay, and if you're doing it for positivity, that would be positive. Yes, that would be. Yeah, yeah, you would help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Did you understand what I was telling her? Understood. Did you understand, Christine? Because I think it was more for Christine. I did. I did. I was going to ask him about my um, skull that I was trying to show him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. They're Thank good. You. That's good energy. You put a lot of healing energy into that. Yes. Yeah. And this guy, yeah. too. I have a lot of little ones, too. I put yes. them around the globe, the world. Yes. Thank you, Grindel. Thank you. I just think, just to add on to what Grindel was saying, if you feel called to a skull or to any kind of um, crystal or something like that, then you just have to trust that that was the one that you need to be working with. And you can intend as much as you can. And, and like Grindel was saying, you know, but your work may be much different than the work of the a skull oh, itself. Yeah. So, you know, trust whatever yeah. you're you're attracted to because it, there's a reason for it. So there's all kinds of reasons for yeah. the the energies of the crystal skulls to be used. But let me tell you this: when they come together, finally, they are the gauge. They are the controllers of the stargates and the, all the other important technology that is crystal line based on the planet because they were created by those entities that have a great technology with the crystals so you you understand when they come together at some point Perfect. how powerful they really are there's actually 13 of the major crystal skulls and there's one that is a controller, which would be in the middle of the 12 mm -hmm. and be moved to um, control certain energies of each of the skulls. It's hard to explain, but I, and I've only read about it and only understood about it through teachings that are out there in the galaxy. But... It is very important that they be gathered at some point. And some of them are in storage at this time and uh, on sitting on shelves in warehouses or whatever. A couple of them have been purchased as art items and are not being utilized for their actual purpose. So they have to be realized and they have to be moved into a public domain almost mm. okay perfect um, yeah. if you have if you're if you're uh, you're ready we have a question from sheer yeah yeah <laughs> hey Grindel how are you I am I'm doing good yeah well, I have two questions the first one is about Corey good you said that some of the information is very, very good. Which kind of uh, information is it for those who watch uh, Cosmic Disclosure? Well, let me tell you, there's so much coming out of them. I mean, it's been, they've been doing this for years now. More than a year, I'm sure. How long has it been? But um, you'll be able to resonate with the positive information and you'll be able to understand what I mean when they start uh, giving some negative information. But, um, but Corey Good is, uh, and Bob, Will, uh, yeah, yeah, Wilcock, he is, um, they have, they've tapped into a source of information that's very good, but they have to be sure that they stay right on that source 
because any movement in the channeling left or right or whatever can cause them to pick up another very similar channel but but one that is not right so that is the danger of channeling these days is you have to be very aware of what's what's happening and pick up on the negative and the positive flow so if like if i am speaking right now and you're feeling negativity or anything weird or odd then you should maybe churn it off but if you understand that what i am bringing forth is actual <coughs> positive information then you'll you'll re resonate with it so you will resonate with the positive things that they have to say and they do have many positive things i i'm not say don't i'm not saying don't listen to them but they do have some junk in there too well let's hope the information will get to them somehow um, yeah. I do have another question. It's a kind of a bizarre question, but I did thought about uh, the essence of colors, like the color gold is like infinity, cross consciousness, white is like uh, purity, red is like the grounding and root chakra. What is the meaning of the color black? Black is not to be used in color analyzations for humans because it is the color of neg ne negativity and darkness so this is the only color that have a negative essence but let me explain something to you that is what its original purpose was because that is how it was created to be you can put positivity even into black but like the deep indigo that is the the third eye chakra is appears at times to be almost black but it is not it has the deep rich blue in it but you see you can add to the color black other things and bring it out of a negative uh understanding but when it was when it was first originated that was all that it stood for is nothingness blackness negativity things of this nature but do not always look at it and think negative thoughts even though that was its original intent you can bring other things to it is not the universe dark but the sky filled with stars and and filled with anomalies and beautiful things so which light up that darkness which makes that darkness purposeful and things yeah I, i'm trying to make a point here but i'm not sure if i'm doing it well no it's actually what i felt about also about uh, space and stuff like that and yeah. maybe we yeah. misunderstood black it is misunderstood in some ways because it it's what you believe it can be you can add things to it and make it less of what it was intended to be originally and actually make it into something completely different so the meaning is um, make it your own it's like choose your own color yes add to the black and make it something else okay thank you very much and so that's a rough one because a lot of people are would just tune right into that solid color and that's not what i would do at this time all right I, maybe it's time for me to go. Oh, do you want to go? Okay, perfect. Well, it was so lovely seeing you, Grendel. Blessings. Oh, lovely to see you too. Thank you, Grendel. It wasn't a laugh fest today, but it was very serious. <laughs> so, You're a laugh um, face. We have one thing for you, jazz hands, Grendel. Just remember. Jazz hands? Oh, my <laughs> God. What the freak is that? Ask Jim. Ask Jim. Jim will tell you. <laughs> oh, oh, Jim. Oh, yeah, well, guess what? <laughs> Grindle, don't play that. <laughs>
<laughs> so, it's always uh, worth a try. It's worth a try. Yeah, you you already, you, <laughs> you'll get the jazz finger as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much. All I never right, got I'll the talk jazz finger. Later. Bless Have you. Have a good day, and I I love you all. I yeah. Love you too. All right. Thank take you, care. Randall. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Okay, we'll just wait to see who comes next. And then yeah. we'll go with Lila. Mm. Lila. This is Elijah. Hello, Elijah. It's nice to see you. Blessings there are many to you. that want to speak today. There are many that want to bring their information from their parts of the galaxy, from their parts of understanding and wisdom. But today, I think what is needed is some balance. I believe that there are many people out there feeling not part of the positive movement, although they are moving forward in positivity. They, they cannot feel it or connect to it in a way that makes them feel vital or makes them feel important about it. And you will have those out there in the world that will tell you, you're not important. All these people telling you that you're important and there that you have a mission and you or that you are have some kind of uh, thing to do for the future. They're just they don't know what they're talking about. Can't you see you're just a normal person doing your normal life, doing all the things that you've always done? But yet you might be aware of a few extra things, aliens and spirits. But you're nobody. Don't let them tell you that. This day and age, there is so much deception. And the deception is more about telling you what not to be doing than to tell you what you should be doing. Saying that things are not working when they should be telling you how to work it. Positivity is that. It is the way to succeed even though things do not look like they can possibly succeed. Bringing out positivity in places where you do not see positivity. Learning to bring positivity to the darkness or to places where none has been seen before. Bringing positive thoughts and energies to relationships that do not seem like they can possibly work. You see, there are so many messages out there that says it doesn't work. But understand this. Your belief system is such that when you grab on to the positivity and know that it works, such as the, the law of attraction and things of positivity and God's love, 
when you hold on to these things, when you grab on to the positivities that you know are there and use them and do not doubt them, they become something else. They become reality. They become part of things that you never could possibly imagine could be. They become part of your person. They become part of your example. They become part of the things that you can use to send out into the world to light some fires. Listen to me. A lot of people will say, that's not Elijah. They will look at and listen to what I have to say and say, Elijah wouldn't say that. Elijah would do this. Elijah would do that. But they don't know me. They don't know who I am. I am looking into the world and trying to bring up the light as high as I can bring it. Trying to start fires in places where there is no light or is no fire. Trying to bring positivity to places that are forced to look at only the negative things. Are you in a place where you are forced into a negative thought process? If that is the case, you need to escape now. You need to find some positive people, some positive thoughts, and some positive actions, and move away from that. There are many jobs out there that are so negatively charged that you, when you get home from your workplace, you can hardly keep your eyes open. You can hardly speak to anyone in a social way, but you are destroyed by those atmospheres. Bring yourself out of that. It is time. Is making a few dollars more important than losing sight of all that is important in your life that will bring you joy and happiness. The people around you who love you, disconnecting because of negativity, disconnecting because this place sucks out all your energies and makes you fit into a mold that you should not be in. I know that some of you have already noticed that and have moved away and I and I congratulate you for moving into a different realm. And you're saying, well, this realm is not that much better because I'm not making money. And so it seems like things are about the same, but you must bring the positivity to you. You must understand that there is nothing keeping positivity away from you except your belief that it is being kept away. Believe in yourself and in the power of God and in the power of eternity that these things can be part of who you are. There are people around you that you are watching and seeing that are struggling because they cannot seem to bring that positivity in. There is something there that's keeping the positivity from their belief system, from keeping the positivity from becoming part of who they are, and they are totally confounded. Let me speak to them in their heart and tell them this. I understand where you are at. Everyone on the face of the earth has been in that place one time or another. It is not that you are alone feeling that way. 
But you are not to feel hopeless, not to feel that there is no way out, because there is always a way out. And that is why some children take their lives and some adults take their lives. They see no more light at the end of the tunnel. They see no more reason to live. They see no more purpose. And that is deception. They have been deceived into believing that there is nothing for them. And nobody cares and there is no light at the tunnel, and that God has forsaken them. All these things are deception. Because if you are looking this way straight ahead, and you cannot see any light, then you need to start turning around and looking other places. Because there is not just one direction to move. There are many. Let me tell you this. I would like to bring hope into your life, prosperity, and all things that are positive. And you say, oh, perhaps that's not what God put me here for. Perhaps I'm made to suffer. But if you are made to suffer, God still puts a joy into those that are suffering for His will. You will be joyful in your suffering, not miserable. God puts joy in those that He is working with. And if He needs to bring you through some hard times, there will still be a joy there somewhere that there is hope that there is life, there is an ending to the problem, there is an ending, a solution coming. And so many of you cannot see it. And I would love to encourage you that there is one for every single person there. And even though my words may fall on some deaf ears, there will be some that will plant this seed of hope and let it grow. Let it be. Let it find the truth. Is there any questions? Yes, there's several questions. And the first person to go will be uh, uh, Lila. Lila, sorry, Lila. 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 Hi, Elijah. Who is Leela? I have a few questions. I can... Oh, it is Leela. Yeah, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Go ahead. Can you hear um, I can can't you hear, hear you, though. You're very, very soft. Now? That's better. Okay. So I have a few questions, very short and to the point. Do I have connection to the crystal scopes? Yes. What is it? That is for you to learn as you live your life. In this life? <laughs> this life and the next. Oh your connection God. to the skulls will come later in this life, but be very prominent in the next. Right, that's what I feel. That's rather next. Uh, the second question is, who is, in the, who is the closest being or, uh, to me, around me, at this point? The closest being is Krishna to you. Krishna? Ganesh, Krishna, yes. and all those that are in that family. Yes, they are. That's wonderful. So I was, uh, I was meditating, uh, like healing, I do healing or uh, regular, and I was inviting my reptilian. Uh, friends for healing and also my children and I would like to know if you could see if they if they appear in my meditation because at this point I'm not aware they appear when you believe they appear because okay. they are part of who you are 
and you are attached to them by love and light. And when they appear, you can feel them. Okay, well, then, then appear. This is now the, the last question. I am a little worried about the Vatican. War means I hope they are going to change the energy to better. Do you see energetically that the people of Vatican, the priesthood, do open up and progress for the new world? And new the future? people of who? Vatican in Rome. The Vatican? Yes. The Catholic Church? Yes. Well, they are huge. Do, do I see them opening up? Yes. I see a great change coming for the church. And I see that they they are going to change how they think about many things. And they are going to change their focus because they need to do so. Wow. That will be that will be wonderful and we really need them to change because there are great negative force in this world and that has to be transformed. So I'm really, really as happy. a whole. Yes. As an organization, they are very negative. Some of the individuals there within the organization are very positive. Yes. As with every organization. However, they need to change as a whole. Absolutely. They need to, you see this new Pope has a different attitude than any of the others in recent years. Has a more liberal thought process in many ways, but he is frowned upon by the establishment, the organization of the church, because they are conservative and they want what they want and they want to be able to control the people with what they ha have intact and what they have set up but he is not following all those rules but he must maintain some of them otherwise he will be in danger of losing his life but there is change coming and I cannot tell you exactly what that will be or look like, but it will be drastic and there will be a huge change at the end of his time. Is that everything then? Um Yes. Lila, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um we also now have um Omran. As, uh, to ask a oh, question. Oh. Yes, my friend. I cannot hear him. I don't hear him either. Umran, are you there? Speak. <laughs> okay, can, can you speak or not? Okay, let me, let me try to, un let me try to unmute him. Maybe he's muted. One, one second, let me just see if I can unmute him and, and see. Good oh, answer. I got it. I got it. Oh, you got it? Perfect. I okay. Go ahead. Awesome. I can hear you now. Yes. yes, you can hear me now. Hello, Elijah. Greetings. I have. I also have a question regarding this crystal skulls. I don't know if that is something you can answer about. I am aware of them, yes. Well, my question is that I know that I was the creator of some of them. In, in the time of Atlantis, Lemuria, and those times. So will I, will I be working with them in this lifetime? It or is what will I be Let doing? me tell you about the crystal skulls that you made. They did not take just a few minutes to make, but years. They are the product of many years of hard work and many years of energy manipulation. Do you understand that? Yes. You, were, you have worked with two of the skulls in the Atlantean era. It took you many years, but you were a great wizard in that sense that you could handle the energies and bring the information to the skulls that were necessary from the 
entities that you were working with to create them. Now, you have future lives with the skulls, and perhaps even in this life, you will be reintroduced to at least one of them. Have you been introduced yet? I have I have only been receiving contact from the one in British Museum. Yes. And that is the one who is very closely connected with me. I don't know if that is the one I was. Yes, that is the one that will speak to you. It was. And, um, and because it is one that you have made. Yes, but I, but I can't have it with me right now. I, I, I don't think no, that would... it cannot be with you. Not in this realm. Yes, what will happen? What will happen if I go to it physically and touch it and look into its eyes? Oh, you will definitely communicate. You will feel the energy and you will know the beings. You will see those who have given you the instructions and you will know exactly which skull it is in number. Okay, oh, very good. Very good. Um, is it also like that, that when, when someone makes the skull, then they also connect all of their consciousness with the skull, so it is actually partially their energy in some way, because oh, they connect of their minds together. You are eternally connected to the skull that you made and to the collaboration that they are representing. Ah, very good, very good. And my last question is, I had a dream a few, like five days ago, I think it was, but it was not an ordinary dream. It was very vivid, and when I woke up, it felt like I was astral projecting the feeling of it afterwards. And in the dream, I was, um, I was in underground base, and I was with a few others, who were very secretive and and we were covering our heads well, and and such then we were waiting for around i think it was around 50 soldiers um, much like humans to enter the room and the next that happened was that these soldiers had had um, electric guns with them weapons and then they i was the other ones of my friends just went on to go outside and then I was suddenly I just uh, took off my whatever um, thing that was covering my head and I was starting to sing in angelic language like a hymn for them that they were they were going to die all of them I don't know if I was part of that act but I was I just completely this, changed it was like time this and is a dream and that there are, this dream is being had by more than just yourself. Very similar kinds of dreams are being experienced by many people around your planet. It is about an event that will come in the future. And it is about the resurrection of the planet in some senses. But it is a future event that is not to happen soon but you will be there to be a part of it. Okay, so it was not some kind of... Um, it was symbolic, mm -hmm. of course. Okay. I thought it but was astral. There were parts of it that were also real. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you very much. You it are was right. just um, surprising that, that so many would die in just in an instant. It is a surprise, but if you look into the future and look into the book of Revelations, there are some truths that are there that are revealed that many will die suddenly. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But not right now. Yes. Thank you very much. That was it for me. I will connect to the rest. Thank you. Yes.
Thank you. Is this not the time for that particular event? That is a ways in the future. And it will be something that will be experienced at this point. It has not changed in your future. But it can change with certain activities. Continue. Okay. Thank you very much, Elijah. Uh, the next person that we have is L. She Hello. can ask a question. Hello. 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 It's it's Elena. Oh, Elena, go uh, ahead, Elena. Hello, Elijah. Um, I would uh, like to ask you a similar question. Who are the beings yes. clo closer to me right now? Closest. Who's the being closest to you? Yes. There actually are a couple beings clo very close to you. One moment. I know God is very close to you right now as well. But yes. there are other beings around you that you are aware of. And they will Should not we... let you say their names, but okay. you are close to God right now. You are close to God right now as well. But I know, did you say Ish? Um, ish, well, I, I, didn't, I haven't seen him for a while i didn't think so i heard that name but i it wasn't something that seemed right but um you are very close to god right now and the other beings will not tell me their names at the moment but that is all right i don't not do yeah. not need to know them <clears throat> no problem yeah um uh, i i started working with uh with some people in my country recently that uh, that have a spaceship over my country and are doing some healing and uh, operations and um, they have a, a station and a laser that that is on the mountain in my city um, they say they are from Sirius but um, a lot of beings are there as well that are from another other planet um can we put some uh, some information in this the the syrians are here on your planet they are the only species that are allowed to actually set foot on your planet at this moment and they were <coughs> in the antarctic area they mm -hmm. have given them permission to also set down on a couple of these different mountain uh, sites but the beings that are around them are holographic and are not allowed to set foot on the planet only Syrians now are allowed to be on your planet and only for a very particular reason and that is to help the earth and that is the only reason why they were given permission is because they have a kind of help for the planet that is necessary for it to survive. So, yes, they are there at some places, but only working for one purpose. To help. Yes. And um, it is very, very specific. Yes, because uh, the plan uh, the plan is to create a church and or a temple, so to say, a Babylon temple that combines all religions together, and uh, the water that is going to to come from the earth at the moment when the temple, because there is a hidden hidden generator in the ground, yes. so the water that's going to come out is going to heal cancer, um, HIV, and other unhealable diseases in commons. It will transmute the diseases. What mm -hmm. is going to happen is the vibration of this particular essence, which we'll call water, is going to have vibrations that will um, grab a hold of these particular kinds of viruses 
bacteria and germs and remove them from the body. Mm -hmm. Instantly. Yes, Almost. well, it, it would appear to be instantly. It will grab a hold of them instantly, but you must pass them through the body for them to be actually out of the system. But they will grab a hold of these particular viruses and bacteria instantly when you put them in the body. Now, you may have to drink more of what you call this water to get all of it out but it will take care of it. Yes, um, I, I, I hope um, and I will help to happen in this lifetime, in this yes. lifespan that we have, and I'm very optimistic. I see that it is not yet ready for the people yet, but I I'll, see. I'll, when, yes, yes, but I there see. are a good amount of people that are um, preparing for this. Yes, I see that. They can just be like protectors of the ground, so to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Do you have time for one more question, Elijah? Yes, if, if that is necessary, I will answer another question. Okay, um, we have Pete. Uh, he has a question for you. Pete, greetings. Yeah, Pete? Continue. We can't barely hear you, so please get up close to your I mic. I cannot hear him at all. Okay. Let me Hello. See Turn your volume up. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're soft. Oh, okay. Um, how about now? A little better. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Eli hi, Elijah. It's good to see, good to meet with you. And I would like to ask only two questions. Yes. Um, my first question is, is that recently I've been feeling off within myself um, for some particular reason due to some um, some solar flares or which or some events um, and so, and right now recently I've been feeling some downness within myself. I was wondering what is the what is happening in a sense at that moment if if you had heard my message today, I'm not sure if you did, but there is a lot of this being experienced right now where, you feel disconnected from the light, disconnected from positivity, and disconnected from um, all the things that seem to be moving in a positive direction. Is that how you feel? Yes. It is. I will go into more depth because I didn't really explain what was happening, but I explained what, how to get out of it a little bit. But... There are solar flares. There's a lot of things coming from the center of the galaxy. Some uh, call it one thing, some call it another. There are timeline interruptions. There is alignments in the solar system also happening. And the Earth energies after this last solstice have calmed down some but have changed. So with all these different things happening at once, it does tend to take the fire out of one's essence. It tends to cause a lot of, of energy to be a very low. So do not, do not worry. Your energy will return. Positivity will return. But believe that God is with you and that that you are all right because it is what it is at this time and it will move forward uh, bring the law of attraction to you bring the thoughts of positivity into your realm because 
it is the only thing that uh, can help right at the moment. I understand how so many have lost hope at this time. There are so many things that look very negative in the world. But fear not, you're not on a negative path. You are on a good journey. And I can see by your icon, there's a great number of positive symbols that are being represented there for you and are telling you about yourself in many ways and about your past, present, and future. So hold on to this. This beautiful icon tells you that there is great beauty still to come. I'm a little tearing up right now. Um, I cannot hear you. I'm a little tearing up right now. Is it a good thing? A positive thing. Excellent. Find your road again because you haven't really left it. It's still right there in front of you. It's just everything looks so dark right now that the light seems a little dimmer than usual. But it will come back into its brightness. Be, you are a person of the light, and you have a mission. And I see part of it in this great icon that you have chosen. It relates to who you are in many senses, and the ethereal parts of your pro thought processes, and how you relate to the earth as a spiritual place. Thank you, Elijah. You're welcome. Um, my next question, my last question before I go is, is that I've been, I've been making, have I been making any progress in connecting to my crystal grid that I have created? Yes, um, you have. Let me tell you about, um, Hold on one moment. Oh, yes. Although you may not feel the connection strongly right at the moment, there are three stones. The stone at 12 o'clock and the, st the stone at 4 o'clock and the stone at 9 o'clock are giving you great energy. And Do you understand? Yes. And is my is my Moldavite gem that stone that I wear? Is does it help help me? It is helping you to connect to the grid. Keep it on. Um, it is interacting with the stones that are there. But what is greater about that piece of Moldavite is it's connecting to your star family and your star system and your, your ethereal out, outside world thoughts. Not only is it connecting to the grid, but it's connected to your spiritual life as well in many ways. This will help you to realize that there's some energy working for you very soon. In fact, the next time that you go to the grid, it's close by, isn't it? Yes. The next time you actually work the grid, you will feel the energy in a different way than you have before. Well, thank you, Elisha, for answering both of my questions. It's You're welcome. Very cal it's been very calming. Good. I'm glad time. you are calm. Because a lot of people on this planet right now are not. And they need to be. They need to calm into their understanding that everything will be all right. And they must move forward in their missions because... 
when there is a great deal of disruption like there is now, it is hard for them to do what they need to do and be the example that they need to be. But calm yourselves and move forward. There are some in this room that need to be calm and move forward because you understand that the reasons why you are feeling the things that you are feeling is because they are trying to destroy all your energy. Thank you, Elijah, for this assistance. Much love to you. There is someone that else wants to come very quickly, if I may let them. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elijah, and blessings to you, and thank you for that lovely message. Many blessings to all of you, and you are all in my prayers. Prayer is a very powerful, powerful means of communication with God, and it connects you with all those that believe the same as you do, and even those that do not. But it is a great connector. So continue to pray and bring love to one another. Thank you. Yes. I'm seeing someone saying they're having attack dreams. Dreams of attack. Mm -hmm. Many people are having these because they are being attacked by negativity. Pray, lift yourself up. I will go now. Blessings to you all. Blessings, Elijah. Ah, greetings. I am Nikolai Tesla. Oh. Or Nikolai, as you may know me. Very I prefer nice Nikolai in the human, in the English language because it's more masculine, but Nikolai is my actual name. Mm. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Hukalo uh, webinar. Um, Thank we you do have some much. questions. Um, maybe some new people have some questions because I only have. Uh, uh, one more person who's lined up, but uh, we have Carrie, and if she wants to uh, ask her question, she can ask it now. There are questions for me. Hello. It is my time to uh, start to be a little more present to the earth and start to make myself known a little more. So please ask your questions. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're the right person to ask, but I feel a particular being around me lately, and I was just wondering if you could tell me who that was. I can check with someone else. Uh, identifying beings is not my forte, but I can check with someone who will do that. One moment, please. Thank you. Oh, interesting. Um, what part of the world do you live in? I live in North Carolina. Interesting. Is it near a city or out in the country? I'm in the country, but it's sort of near Asheville, a city. I see. Because this is a being that usually takes, um, comes to the earth, and they're not supposed to land on the earth or be on the earth, but they have been landing in an area near to you that seems to be out away from the city. Uh, this person's name is Vensuta, and they have a friend named Tenzu. Uh, these are who are visiting you, but not they are not 
walking into your home necessarily, but they are astral projecting themselves around you. Um, they seem to want to take you on one of their voyages. They want you to actually interact. There's a few people on the planet that they, they want to uh, take on actually a, a journey, and you are one of those people. Have you been asking for this kind of thing? Yes. That is why they are there. Vincentu cool. and Tenzu. Cool. Uh, they're benevolent, I'm assuming. Yes, and they are Yu Yu. Ah, okay. Okay. Is that, cool. that re does that relate to you as well? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's cool. Well, then this is the answer. I've been told by one of my friends that that is who is around you and has been looking at you for a while to take you on a star trip journey. Cool. How exciting. But I don't know if they will be able to quite yet. There are too many things happening on your uh, planet for them uh, too much surveillance for them to actually land right now um, Both east and west of the Mississippi are being very much uh, looked at by radar and by many things and um, There are many sightings in the skies they're telling me many things right now, so but um, Yes, that is their purpose for being around you awesome thank you for that and then can I ask just one last question certainly that is are you would you be able to tell what my life was like in Atlantis oh well I'm connected with my friend here so and he knows those kinds of things so your life in Atlantis was one moment please Okay, you've had more than one life in Atlantis, for one thing, but the greater of the lives was uh, in the council. You weren't one of the five, the five leaders of it, but you were in the, the element at large, which means there was a council of the Atlanteans and Lemurians that was a, a sort of a, a council at large, and you were part of that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Blessings, much love. I have a question. Uh, there is a question in the room. One moment. Please, please. go ahead. Can you come to the microphone, wherever it is? I have a question. A Speak weeks, into the mic. A couple weeks ago, I was got up during the night to go to the kitchen to get a drink, and I had this fear come over me. Was there somebody or something in the apartment? One moment, and I will check with my friends. These are questions that I don't usually answer, but um, one moment, please. Yes, there was um, unusual visitors to you. They were of a, not of a positive species, but they were of a uh, insectoid species okay. that were around you. And your dogs were also reacting to this. This is twice. Yes. Okay, thank you. Your dogs also reacted to them, on. yes. We also have another question here in the room. Ah, in the room. Can, come to me. And it's Lydia. Lydia. Ah, yes. Lydia. yes. Come, to, come here. Yes. Um, so I was wondering what my family's connection to Atlantis might be. Okay. Lydia, by the way, is, um, oh, should I tell them? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay? <laughs> Lydia was my mother in a prior life. In the life that I was Nikolai Tesla, Lydia was my mother. If you want to see what she looks like, take a look into the camera. So, hi, mom. 
And your question is, what is your connection to Atlantis? Like my family, like with my mom and my brother. Ah, one moment. Like I said, these are questions for my friends. Because my connection is more to engineering and inventions and things of that day. But it's all right. I will, that will, will be something I can give for you. One moment. You've all had different lives on Atlantis, and not all at the same time. But you and... Erica. No. I'm listening. You and Herb had lives together, and you and Herb had lives together in Atlantis. You both had, all three of you had two lives in Atlantis each. But you were not all together at all every time. You were a, a, what they might call a magistrate at that time. Um, law enforcement magistrate. You were a crystal worker in the mines at one time. They had mines on Atlantis. Oh, it was a diamond mine, not a crystal mine. I'm sorry. The diamonds that were, they found there have never been recovered. Herb was a musician and also he was an artist. But he was an artist and musician in one of the lives. In the other life, he was a communicator of some sort of a, oh he was part of the toning church of the hathors that visited the atlantean culture yes and you knew him during that life when he was a toning minister he was like a, a religious leader for Tony. Go ahead. Okay. Any other question? Tessa, I have some. Well, I wanted to say the other week when the power went out in our neighborhood. Yes. And I had this big feeling of peace of everything would be fine if it never came back on because you would come with your inventions to help us. And then that yeah. second, the power came back on. Wow, so interesting. Thank you for that message, I guess. Um, Yes. And my other question was, how was I related to you in the lifetime when Lydia was your mother? Was that your sister? One moment. And yes, you were related to me at that time as well, mm -hmm. because you are very connected family-wise in your incarnations, for the most part. Not always on Earth. Mm -hmm. But in that lifetime, actually, you were my grandmother. Oh, okay. okay. You were my grandmother. Yeah. Good. So, mother and grandmother. It's nice to know you in this lifetime. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I have a question from David Waller. Yes. Um, his In the Bible, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the Lord, the great, it's in Malachi. Yes. Um, he wants to know, his specific question is, is this the, the Elijah that he's talking about that we spoke to today? Is this the Elijah? Malachi was Jim's former higher self. Elijah is now his form is his higher right. self. Is, so yes, it is. It is the Elijah of the Bible that they're talking about. It would be yes. Thank you for your, our conversation the other night too. You're welcome. Is there any other question? I can answer more technical questions than I can answer spiritual questions. I've been through rather a lot of social training recently because I was told <laughs> that my manners were not the best. <laughs> well, but now not. I have come into a greater understanding of um, how to be a little bit more social. You see, when I was on the earth and lived my life there i was not a very happy social or friendly person 
And so I had not a good reputation for getting along well with anyone, really. So now I am working on my demeanor. And I must say, I understand that I can like people again and connect with them in a different way than I ever had before. And so this is a great joy for me to be able to be with you. Well, is there thank any you other very much. Questions? Yes, there's a question from Dawn and then from Christine. So, Dawn, ah. Hello, Nicole. <clears throat> it's good to uh, talk to you. I was just wondering. I was wondering if the uh, crystalline engines that you explained to Pamela Erlen August eighth, twenty sixteen, are actively used now in the ICC ships of uh, yes. warp drive. Actually, they are, and even they have improved upon them since then. Um, there's. Although you may think that there was no way to improve on them, there, wa there are several improvements that they made to them, and they are fine, fine machines at this time. How are you made aware of these? I relayed the message that you gave to Pamela Erlen that I posted ah, I on the web. Excellent. I understand. I was just wondering how the information got to you. <laughs> Uh, actually, Pamela asked if there's anybody that would like to post this information, and I accepted that. Challenge. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that because I am going to be coming around a little more often in the future. Thank you. You're welcome. It was nice to speak to you. Blessings to you, Nikolai. Thank you. Okay, Christine had a question. Christine. Greetings, um, Nikolai. Um, I was wondering, um, in some of these um, remote places like um, the desert or uh, Indian reservations or in other places on um, other continents, can your small box, or do you know if that small um, energy box is going to be used soon to eventually give. the governments know how to make them because they were something i had already made yes and the instructions were left behind after i passed and they have the full understanding of those energy boxes and how they work self self-contained and able to run for hundreds of years maybe not forever but for quite a long time because they recycle energy in a way that makes it fresh and vital again. And of course, you, after realizing that energy never dies and it always exists, it continues to move and that once someone, um, uh, you know, after a battery is dead, that means the energy has escaped and gone somewhere else and has become part of other energy fields. So therefore, with energy, energy never really dies, but it, it, it is brought into another field where there is other energy. So you may have energy escape and go somewhere else and become part of another energy field. But these boxes are able to contain that energy, not letting it escape and keeping it um, vital and moving and very strong. It has a sort of a, an amplification uh, to it as well, so that it does not uh, in time weaken. At, at one time, um, maybe last year sometime, somebody had posted how to make one on the internet and had um, told uh, and put a little referendum or a little note to it that if the government, government doesn't make it available within a certain amount of time, they were going to go public with it. And then oh, all oh. of a sudden, everything disappeared. Absolutely. 
your government does not want that kind of information out there at all because why because that would be the demise of all your electric companies and generators and things of this which employ thousands and thousands of people and so of course as soon as that information comes out and becomes common knowledge then many people will lose their jobs Can so but it will have to happen eventually because things are changing and that kind of energy is no longer efficient enough and and the way that i have made the the electric box the little black box is efficient and will be used it will not look as like it did it will not be like a little black box they will make it into something quite different and much more elegant looking but um and it will be smaller uh they've learned how to make the same thing in very tiny ways that are very powerful and will run for hundreds of years but is it possible to um inspire um people like on the reservation that um are way out there and don't have water and so on and so forth to inspire somebody there in these remote areas or in the remote africa or remote wherever remote remote <laughs> so that exactly. these is it possible to um get somebody out there to uh yes they, i'll tell you something very interesting they, okay. they already exist out there oh good okay. but they not just, in the same there some of them have some of them look like little white boxes some yes. of them look like uh, silver in in essence some of them are little black boxes but they do exist but the government if they knew that they existed in some of these places they would take them out of course but uh, or actually they would probably just shut them down there are ways to shut them down oh but um yes they exist already and then the the thing with the water too is um like i i've seen um people young kids create these things on how to collect water the moisture in the air and turn it into water for places with no water things like this are these going on just below um the surface of the um the um government so that these people oh, don't die? actually they know about some of them already uh -huh. but they're they're in such small they're in such small degrees that they're really not making an effect on any of their money or profits okay so they allow them to exist in some ways so they can actually observe them for a while as long as they because don't make they, they're public. making them they're going to make them in much larger sizes i know outside of um uh bend oregon where i live they're just taking a lot of the desert and turning it into uh, solar panels. So, oh, yeah. yes, some places are good. Absolutely. Thank. Oh yes, and there will be. Yes. Uh, there will be many different discoveries of mine that are coming forth as time moves forward. Uh, things have got to change. They yes. don't have enough energies that are natural to continue with that although they say oh we just found thousands of gallons millions of gallons of more under here or there these things are inefficient compared to what I had to offer them yes thank you Nikolai you're welcome Um, we have, uh, do you have time for another question, Nikolai, or? Yes. How are you doing? Okay, we have Amanda that wanted to ask a question. Amanda. Hello, can you hear me? Of course. Awesome. Hello, Nikolai. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Um, I find a very personal connection with trying to get people fed. Is there anything 
in your research that you've uncovered, like you always hear about the replicator technology. Is there anything like that forthcoming soon? Replicator technology? Correct. Um, yes, it has already been discovered of how to do some re replicator technology. It, it goes with, it comes from the same technology that cloning comes from. Uh, using s similar DNAs to to make other people, they use similar um, molecular structures, and uh, they they clone they they clone the molecular structures in some ways to do these these replic replications. Now, the energy and the technology used to do that. Is not common knowledge, but they do have it out there already. You humans do have it. Very good. And I also, I'm sure you're aware of the Tesla model vehicles that are available and oh, yes. the upcoming models that are available. I very much want one because I love the idea of it, but yes. I am very concerned with the battery disposal. Is there a way? That well, eventually, eventually there will be no disposal of the battery mm -hmm. because it will never die. Those, the same technology that's used in the black boxes for energy uh, continuation will be used in these batteries, and so you won't have to dispose of them. You can reuse them or reinvent uh, a, uh, a way to use them, or they can be continuously used in the car as a car battery, but there will be several different kinds of batteries, of course. But the disposal of them will not be necessary in the future. The very fact that there is dis there is a disposal now tells you that they want uh, to continue to sell them and that they are not concerned about the waste. But of course, they're in the future, they will not have to be wasted. They can be recycled in many different ways. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. There's a question in the room. There's a question in the room, I am told. And who would that be? This is Erica again. I was Hello, wondering Erica. about your friendship with um, Mark Twain. If you could tell us a little bit about that, would you talk about things like telepathy? What my she wants to know about my relationship with Mark Twain. Mark Twain was fascinated on by what I was doing. I could actually care less what he was doing. But <laughs> oh, sorry, oh. that was a little insensitive. Okay. But um, I mean, I was interested in some ways, but it was ho hum. So, <laughs> but yes, we did discuss. He was very interested in discussing technology. He was very interested in actually writing about him, but I don't didn't want him to do that because A, there was no way his understanding of what I was doing could be in his brain to translate it to paper. And so I, we had many discussions and we had many thoughts about that. And, and I thought he was a brilliant man, actually. I, I did love the way he could communicate with people and he was actually very tolerant with me because of course i was a little abrupt about some of his subject matter i go what the heck? <laughs> no bearing on anything as far as i was concerned but uh, i i said to and he just he told me what the bearing was that it had on America and what he was trying to do with his thought process and and how that my thought process and his thought process were very similar in the invention of things and his invention of characters and different things because his characters had to last for a long time too. They couldn't be just disposable characters and they couldn't be just disposable dialogues. They had to be dialogues and thought processes that would make a difference to people. And, and, and so I understood that, but it, it made no difference to me because I was not very social. So um, having said that, I was fascinated by the fact that he could be so social and that his life was 
uh, surrounded by many people and mine was not so. And when we did meet, if he wanted to bring someone along with him, I really frowned upon that. I didn't really want, I just would rather have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if he was trying to have more than one conversation at a time, it was, I thought it was uh, annoying. But, um, but yes, I've changed a lot since then. So, but yes, I thought he was a fascinating person and we argued about social things many times and about uh, our disagreement of uh, who, who people really were and how people really are. And he had a very different idea of society than I did. And he, I had a very different idea of what I was here to do than what he thought I was here to do, actually. He thought I was here to revolutionize uh, everything. And I saw that the world wasn't ready for that. But, and that is why uh, my conflict with Alexander Granville was so severe is because he was such a big mouth jerk. And he was saying, me, me, me. And I, and I was just saying, let me alone, basically. You do what you want to do. You think you're a great inventor. Um, you don't know a tenth of what I know. But I wouldn't tell him that. Well, I did tell him that. <laughs> um, I did say that. I, I have to be honest. I did tell him that I thought he was a little bit of a jerk. So we didn't get along very well. But things have changed, my life has changed, and this is a new experience, a new, a new, a whole new world. Yes. So does that answer your question? I'm yes. oh, sorry about that. Oh, perfect, thank you. Um, there's a question of, does Jim need any water? Is, is uh, how's the channel doing? Is he? Um, he said it's about time to wrap up anyway, so it should be all right. Okay. I can answer another one more question and then we'll go. We do have one more question from Omran and uh, we'll let him go in and, and answer the question then. Excellent. That's good. Hello, Nicola. Greetings. I think I think I know you somewhere. Yes. Um, I have a question regarding Tesla technology and, and Tesla knowledge because I have remembered through astral experiences and dreams that Many beings seek me out for such knowledge and Tesla technology where I give them these knowledges and technologies, but at sometimes I take it back from them by force because they misuse it. Um, well, am I yes. some kind of akasha of these yeah, knowledges, information? You are what? I felt like I was some kind of source of information or a yes, yeah. And I know why you take them back because the Tesla coil, the field generator, and all those that you have, that, that you, that's the name you put on them, ha are the basis for many different kinds of inventions and many different kinds of uh, energy conduction and uh, conductiveness or whatever you want to say it, however you say it. But <laughs> They are great conductors, but they are also uh, great amplifiers of energy and great uh, producers of uh, energies that are not normal or, and not likely to be around just in the air, but uh, can, be, can produce uh, different kinds of energies that can uh, be used for transporters, uh, many kinds of weaponry, which is not what they are there for, but they can be used for weaponry and for transportation, um, many kinds of things. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and, and from this experience, I, it was kind of funny because it was like the whole society was coming after me for this technology. And finally, I gave it to them and they were really happy 
and they used crystals to to work on it and then i warned them that i will always keep an eye on them and all that they will all their inventions will come back to me and i will know about it so it was uh, yeah yes the the undying energy sources are the things that are most interesting the energy sources never die and to be able to keep them alive and useful for hundreds of years or even eternity if you knew how to do it properly is is like um, the greatest thing that you can ever invent and so I feel very humbled by the fact at this point at one point I felt very like I was the king of the world but at this point I'm very humbled by it because it still is not in use to the point where it should be and it's not creating the lifestyles that it should be and it's not being used for the positivity that it, it once was so oh I'm not sure what that is it looks like the eye of raw or something <laughs> yes well I was I was thinking of, of I have been fascinated by by that you wrote that the numbers three six and nine were secrets to the universe and I have been exploring a lot with them regarding magic and how to use them with geometries so I found that three is the triangle and is connected with our psyche and it should be able to to stimulate our mind or third eye in some ways yes is, I see that. Is oh, okay. Okay. I am. I'm seeing the. I'm understanding it. But you see, my mind works technological. So I turn it into a, a technology symbol and turn it into technology the way you have it written out that way. And so that's very interesting. I could make that into technology. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Yes. Can. Thank you very much, Nicola. That was it for You're me. You're welcome. And, and see it you. is time for me to go. I did, what, is there another question? It's always many, many questions, but we have we are we are done right now. We always have much love many questions. To much love to you. I Thank am, you so um, very much. Oh my goodness. I'm enjoying talking to you, but I know the time is up, and I must go. And I have not been as polite continuously as I am supposed to be, but I'm still working on them. I'm a work in progress, as they call it. So please forgive me. Blessed be, Tekla. Blessed be. Yes, I have heard that before. <laughs> Sorry, there was an explosion outside of my house. I had to run and An see explosion? What it was. Yeah, it was some kids lighting off some fireworks. Ah, so, mm, a, having fun. Yeah, I believe it is <laughs> around the 4th of July, yes. mm. Independence Day for the United States. Yes. Very well. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Namaste and blessings to you. Hello. Hello. Thank Hi, you. Great. You're amazing. We had lots of wonderful conversations. We had Nikola Tesla. We had our friend Grendel who gave me the jazz finger and not the jazz hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and uh, Elijah was there. So that's funny. Lots that of like <laughs> Grendel would think of that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Lots of questions. The, so. the jazz finger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So we we were going to uh, end with two blessings, I think. Unless you have something else to say, we have two blessings. Uh, one from right, your side, good. and then Sabrina's going to go after. So okay, great. Yeah. But thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, participating in the webinar. It's been wonderful. So on with the You're blessings. Sabrina, and we have a blessing in the room here too. Yeah, she can go first. Blessing oh. in the room, and then we'll go with Sabrina. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. Next, so Bar Barb. Barbara. Just thinking something else wants to come through. Oh, okay. Nahia Shima Kaniya wa Nika na Ahaya Haniya wa A. Yerti Ada Rapaya Hia Kayana. Yahia Hoa Yana Niaka. Yahi Sima Niaka. Haya Hoa Nini Hamini Hadinia. Haya Nini Hana Hana. Things are never ending, and you call it time. But yet it's something more significant than that. It's actual matter that will always exist in energy form. Make sure that you are using your energies to the greatest benefit of the world and that you are bringing it in so that others may benefit from it as well. Light up your world, even though it may not seem that it can possibly be a lit. It can be, and you are the answers to many questions. Okay. Go ahead. Thank Marina. you. Thank you. Hi, Jim. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for channeling for us today. Thank um, you. Thank you for being here. Father, we want to thank you for this day, for all these people that have come together to bring the light onto this planet, to remind us of who we are and what have we always been. Don't let us forget that we are the light that regardless of what happens or whatever event surrounds us at this point and whatever thoughts come to mind, that we are part of you and that we can never be separated no matter what happens, no matter what event is seen, no matter what darkness comes around, the light can never be shut out for we are light and we are you and we hold you in our innermost being and we hold you in our core so whenever you find yourself in moments that are difficult Ask God to take it from you. Give your fear to God. Give your anxiety to God. Give your stress to God. For he will take it. And he will know what to do and what to give you at that moment. Allow him to be in you as he is. Know the joy of holding that, that you are within you. For when we say that the light is within you, it means that your greatness is there. That it's not to be sought out or seeked out outside of you, but it's all within you that you have the power, the ability to shine and to give. And be kind to those that do not see it at the moment. Be the light wherever you go. For wherever you go, you will shine unto others 
whatever it is that they need at that moment. Thank you all for being here on this planet at this time to help it become what it was always meant to be. And let's remember that there is much that humanity has to offer. And we are creative. We are very creative. Let's use that creativity to bring it to the other side and to see the brightness that this planet will become in this universe. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. And thank you, Karen. I appreciate you hosting today. You did an amazing job. I appreciate it so much. Oh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much. And, thank you to uh, you thank for you. always giving of yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, and thank you, everybody that uh, have was here today. I appreciate all of you. Love you. And I will see some of you during the week. This week, we'll see uh, what happens. So um, much love. And uh, until next week. Bye, Jim. Bye-bye. I will not be here the 15th of the month. But I may, I probably will be here next week. Okay. All right. But not on the fifth. All right. Well, okay. Well, thank you everyone thank you. for taking place in the webinar. And this has been the Hukalo Saturday webinar with Jim Charles. Be sure to visit hukalo.org for all um, of the activities that are going on with Human Colony. And if you want to, you can join. You can join the the. Uh, the, the group and, and take part in the webinar in the next, the next now that we have. So okay. blessings to everyone and be sure to check out the retreat that's coming at, um, at the beginning of August with Human Colony and you can meet Jim and Max and all the Hukalo people face to face and, and do some nice co-creating. So blessings everyone and we will see you next time. I am really looking forward to the workshop. I really am. It'll be the first presentation of galactic reiki it'll be the gathering of a lot of people that i want to meet so i, I please come if you, <laughs> if you have any inkling to come please do please come yes All right. please. much love to you <laughs> much love to you and namaste everyone namaste